first cycle of life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just said I need to be more respectful of life for those who are tuning in because we had one of those, what are they called? I call them water bugs. One of those ancient nasty creatures with a million legs. Ugh. That's saved it. It's outside. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, and it's kind of bringing up a point um, that I wanted to make at the very beginning of this class. I don't have like a big spiritual theme today. I think it's going to be profound that you really need to be contemplative on. Other than to say, uh, this will be more of an Ashtanga practice. We're going to be moving grooving today. We're going to be flipping ourselves upside down today in honor of what's happening in the world. So we just had the death of Queen Elizabeth II. And you may or may not know the fact that I used to live in England. I lived in England for like a semester of college and loved my time there. Loved getting free health care there. <laughs> um, it was a fantastic time period of my life. Um, and a lot of the places that are in the news right now, you know, just the procession that's occurring between her going from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey. You know, I've been to these places several times. When she was in Scotland, um, I've, I've walked the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. And so I'm not following it too much, but you can't help not to see some of that footage or some of the articles or some of the videos that may be popping up um, on your feed or whatever. And so I want to bring in the fact that we have poses that we call the king and queen of asanas. And the queen of asanas is a shoulder stand and the king of asanas is considered headstand. And in this particular practice, we do those at the end. Usually I'll pick one or the other, but we're gonna do both today. I did bring in an extra yoga lift. So in case you don't wanna apply the pressure to your neck or you don't normally flip into headstand, this is a great apparatus that will keep you safe. And I can help you flip upside down on that. Um, we're also going, well, we're not gonna do the restorative royal pose, but in the next class, which is gentle and restorative, we'll be doing shoulder stand against the wall. We'll be doing the headstands and the apparatuses. And then we'll be doing something called the royal pose, which is a very luxurious, uh, blissful position to be in. Now, it doesn't matter to me what side you kind of go with. I mean, as Americans, we may not pay much attention to the monarchy. Um, I actually think it's a very ancient system and it's it kind of blows my mind that it still exists today, quite honestly. And personally, I don't trust anybody with that much power and money. So that's where I stand on it. But where I stand on it is neither here nor there. There's people all around the world that are being affected by the death of the queen, who was ruling for 70 years. And so there's a lot of people feeling a lot of grief. You know, the people of Great Britain may be feeling like their foundation is shaken yet once again um, with this handover um, to a new person and wondering if they're going to do a good job or a bad job. So there's some people that have grown up with her that are super connected to her. Think about in the Commonwealth countries or even in Great Britain, it's like the biggest celebrities, right? So probably the most famous person that you would feel grief stricken by the loss of, um, of their life. Um, that's probably what they're experiencing over there. Um, you may be on the flip side of it like me, where you're kind of indifferent to the fact. It's like, well, there's corruption everywhere and that family is probably no different. You might be on the conspiracy side of things that think, oh, they're reptilians and they're aliens and they're nasty evil doers and celebrating the fact, I don't care what you align with. I just want you to go into these poses today and remember it's the queen and king of the asanas and it said that for a reason, because they're inversions and we can get so many benefits just from changing our perspective of things. And that is one of the main spiritual lessons of being inverted. How can we open our mindset, look at things in a new way, at a new angle, with a fresh perspective and see through the veil, the veil of forgetfulness, the veil of illusion, the veil of what we think reality is, the veil of what we think they stand for or stood for, okay? So let's begin. C. 
sitting and breathing. So find a comfortable seat. Elongating the spine. Closing and resting the eyes. Resting palms down on the lap. I want you to focus on the first and the seventh chakras. The first chakra being our foundation, what rules the lower body, our skeletal system, our circulation, the process of elimination, our legs and feet, our ancestral tides, our bloodline, our families, conditionings, past. And every time you breathe out, focus on the exhalation, dropping you down, down, down into your seat. That which connects us to the earth. <clears throat> That which is said to relate us to the earth star. Now that you've been grounding down, I want you to focus each time you breathe in on your inhalations, allowing the heart to stay uplifted, but then bringing it even farther up to the Ground of the head to the top or seventh chakra. To the place as if we were royal, we would be sitting the crown on our head. So the crown chakra represents our connection to our higher self, to a higher power. To the ultimate wisdom and state of being. And regardless of what you're aligning with and your view of the queen, this is an opportunity to heal humanity's heart. London is often referred to as the heart of the planet. There was a double rainbow above the palace. It was a beautiful day in Scotland. And last night with the procession, different lights were shimmering and dancing at different points that even the announcers were bringing it up. You could see this light as a celebration of her being a good soul. You could also see this as a celebration for a new beginning returning the power to the people. Let's go ahead and begin to crack the eyelids open and let's come away from our seat. Let's get up to stand at the top of the mat and bring our hands to prayer position at your heart. And then start to align your legs, start to align your spine, bring your hands to prayer position here at the chest. And on your next inhale, circle the arms wide and up overhead. And as you exhale, begin to pour down into your Uttanasana, your standing forward fold. Inhale, glide up halfway, lengthen through the vertebrae. And as you exhale, step it down the mat to plank, rock it forward and lower it down to a low push up. Inhale, glide through and up to upward facing dog. And exhale, roll back over your toes to downward facing dog. Reposition anything that will improve your alignment, improve your structure, and then begin to improve your breath. Maybe constricting the back of the throat, making the breath audible to hear. So 
On your next inhale, let's lay on the feet at the top of the mat, coming to Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, roll down to regular Uttanasana. Inhale, push down to the feet and sweep the arms up overhead and bring hands to prayer positions on the seat. Continue with those. Inhale, extend the arms and exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, pop up halfway. And exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. You can bounce back to that one pose or pass through the leg. Opening the heart on the inhale and rolling back on the exhale. So even downward facing dog is an inversion. So especially in this pose, keep your eyes open. Open yet focus on one sedentary. On your next inhale, bring the feet to the top of the mat, open the heart center, and exhale, bow out. Inhale to Urdhva Hasasana. Exhale, We're going to continue with the A series. Inhale, open up. Exhale, close into self. Inhale, open to new possibilities. And exhale, build your strength. Inhale, create some flexibility in mind and body. Exhale, rock and roll. Committing to this practice, committing to your breath, committing to your own spiritual evolution. Meditating on the sound or the feel of the breath. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, belly, chest, face, release. Inhale to the top. Exhale, Samasti deep. Continue, inhale. Exhale, saluting the sun. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, take it down and hover. Elbows clip into the side body. Inhale, lean through your arms and neck. Exhale, rock and roll. Nourishing yourself with breath. Inhale to the top of the mat. Exhale, lower down again. Inhale all the way to the top. Exhale, Samasthiti. We're going to take it to B now. So inhale, take it to Utkatasana in your chair position. Exhale, fold over straight legs. Inhale, long in the spine. Look out with the eyes. And exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale to down dog. The right foot steps through, warrior one. Hips tee off. Exhale, hands plant. And continue the flow. Left foot leads next, warrior one. Exhale, release. Continue the flow of movement. Pausing in the third down dog to complete five yogic breaths. Two. 
feet land at the top and then close back in. Bend knees, lift the arms, Utkatasana. Thanks so so much to keep that going. Inhale to Utkatasana, fierce pose. Exhale, straight lens. Inhale, create some space. Exhale, lower the space between you and the floor. Inhale, rise to the silks of the arms. Exhale, rock and roll back. Right foot steps through, warrior one. Exhale down. Step it back, release, lift, and roll. Left foot steps through. I don't know if you've ever been to London, but if you ever go and you see the guards, they're so stone faced, no expression whatsoever. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale Uttanasana. Inhale Utkatasana. Exhale Samasthiti. Okay, we're warming up the muscles, right? Inhale Utkatasana. Let's keep building the heat for a moment. Inhale, pop up. Exhale, chaturanga, wherever you want to arrive. Continue that flow of movement. Warrior one with the right foot in the lead. And then once you flow, take it to the left side next. You lost the breath along the way. This is the perfect time to reclaim it. Just like our minds can get overworked or over busy, sometimes when we're going through a flow, the body takes over and we lose sight of the breath. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, release. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, we're doing one more. <laughs> Inhale, chair. Activate the core, even on the descent. Inhale, stretch out. Exhale, strengthen your upper body. Inhale, open up. The heart and throat, exhaling past the hips back. Right foot, warrior one. Exhale, hands down. Take the flow. Smooth it out. Your left foot next. Now, this is the final down dog for the Surya Namaskaras. Make it count. Make every breath worthy of your attention. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, full release. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Okay, feet apart, shoulders back. 
Release the hands once you descend and lace the first two fingers around each big toe. Bend the elbows, fan them out, and drive down between the legs. Tip the weight forward towards your toes. And every time you breathe out, maybe pull that belly button in. Inhale, straighten the arms, lift the head away from the center of the legs. Good, now open up the bottoms of the feet by residing on your heels and lifting the toes up. Your hands are gonna go all the way up underneath the arches of the feet and then bow the head. Slightly tuck the chin. How much do we need to release? From our ties, from our past, from our family, from our conditioning, in order to grow. Release the hands, bring them to the waist, and come up. All right, we're going to step the right foot down the lane of the mat. The feet are pretty parallel with each other, a wide space between them. And then rotate your right foot 90 degrees, lengthen the arms out, cross over the right leg, and take triangle pose. There's different variations, different expressions. I'll let you pick the one you fancy. Inhale, come up. Turn the right foot in, left foot rotates out. Lean out over that front leg, windmill down to triangle. Inhale, come up. Exhale, relax your arms. We need to reposition the feet. So turn the left foot, then the right all the way. Now offset your left foot, plant it down square your hips, lift your left arm skyward. Exhale, let's revolve the triangle so that left hand can come to a block to your right leg or the ground. And slowly come up. Rotate the left foot all the way to the short edge of the mat. Offset your right foot, square the hips. Zip up your midriff, extend your right arm. Good, and exhale, revolve triangle. So you're rotating the torso to the left. Slowly, safely. All right, spin the feet so they're parallel. Again. Good, rotate your right foot 90 degrees, open out the arm shoulder height, lunge the knee, prop to your thigh and sail the left arm across your ear, side angle. Again, there's other expressions and variations. Feel free to pick your favorite. Burning, I am a fountain of boundless energy and power. Inhale, come up. Right foot turns in, left foot turns out. Float the arms up, bend the knee, and bring it down to side angle on this side. Firming, I am 
a fountain of boundless energy and power. Inhale, come up. All right, turn the left foot in, turn the right foot away. And then you're going to take revolving side angle. So I'm going to do the variation today with straight arms. You can do the one with hands to prayer position if you prefer. With straight arms, the left hand can be rooted down on the inside of the foot. You can also cross the arm over to the outside of your front thigh and rest on fingertips. Exhale, release from the twist. Rotate the back foot down, the right foot in, come up to stand safely, cautiously. Left foot turns, left knee bends, rotate away from the back heel. Determine which revolving side angle you want to practice today. We can all be different. Good, release that hand. We're gonna go ahead and keep the hands to the floor, spin the feet be parallel, and then lower down the crown. Again, another inversion that we find ourselves in, but it's also a forward fold. Both forward folds and inversions can be a calming agent for the mind and nervous system. Keep you doing your deep yoga breathing. That can be part of that inner alchemy. All right, walk the hands forward, lift the head up halfway. Okay, that was the A. We're just going to do A and B today. So root the feet, come back up to stand, take your hands to your waist, shoulders roll back, and then belly sits up, and you're going to fold again, keeping the hands here, but lowering the crown of the head to face the floor. Shoulders stay back, heart center stays open. Breath stays full. Affirm and now relax and cross the side all mental burdens and boundaries. Break the feet and inhale slowly. Come on. All right, your right foot's gonna turn, your left foot's gonna offset, and you can either clip a one of your elbows, crossing your arms behind your back, or reverse prayer hands. Exhale, fold over the right leg. Take your time entering the entrance and the exit of the pose is critical. Inhale, come in. Exhale, turn, turn, turn. Pyramid with the left of the lead. If you cross your arms, press across the other way. If your hands are in on the same, you can say, we're going to lean out over. Front leg. You're gazing towards your foot, the left hip squeezing in. Once you develop a calm mindset, you can plug in this positive affirmation. I give myself over into the flow of grace. We're going to release the hands. We're going to go ahead and step up to the top of the mat. 
All right, from standing at the top of the mat, we're going to root the left foot. We're going to take Padibhusasana A, which can look like this, holding the right knee. You can also use a strap or hand to bind the foot and extend the leg. We're just going to do A and D today. Both hands to the hips, right leg extend, body blue socks in the D. It may drop or dip, that's all right. Walk out the feet, round your right, hold your left. Their formation. Transfer the left hand if you're holding the foot or strap to D. release. Okay, we're going to take the tree. Now, if you want to take it to tree the regular way, foot to the inner calf or thigh. If you prefer half lotus, we'll be standing on the left leg. Again, regular tree or half lotus. Release. Back and standing on the right side. Regular tree, turning the hip open, or ankle to the hip crease, or half lotus. All right, go back into the flow, hands to prayer, bend the knees, create Utkatasana, this variation of chair if it doesn't strain your shoulders and neck, if it does, do it the other way. Three. And flow down to Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway open. Exhale to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down, down. All right, you can jump through to sit or you can just come to the knees and find your way to a seat. That's what I feel like jumping today. <laughs> Okay, over there. <laughs> Legs out, arms overhead. Push up through your heels, spread your toes, and then exhale, dive over. Catch the feet if you can. And if you can find your feet, have your thumb kind of pushing into the mouth or the base of that big toe, and your other four fingers arriving slightly, drawing the pinky toes back towards your shoulders. Ashimotas. 
All right, we're going to release the hands and we're going to inhale, slide the hands back behind us, erect the spine, and then point your toes and then lift away from the floor and open your throat. Look straight up. Breathe. From reverse plank, lower the seat, slide your right foot back, and then come to the top of your sit bones. The right arm is going to reach to the inside of the knee, and it's going to rotate around to find. And then the left arm extends, and it sweeps behind the back. Maybe the hands meet, maybe they don't. It's okay. But continue to flex out that left ankle. Look in the direction of the foot, how you are your sheet. So inhale, come up. Slide your right foot to the inner thigh. Lift the arms back up towards the sky. Place your hands together above like you're creating a little tiny umbrella. And then as you exhale, see if it's possible for the hands to wrap around the bottom of the foot. Good. Now notice where your navel is. And I want you to pierce the navel in and wrap it around towards your left eye. Inhale, release your hands, slide them back as you re-erect the vertebrae, and then slide your left foot back and just point the right foot behind it. Good, left arm's gonna go to the inside of the knee, twist that arm and wrap it in front of your shin. Right arm slips behind your back. You can dip the head down, gazing beyond the tip of the nose, or close the eyes. When you're in breath, keep the arms behind your back. Just slowly. Lift your head and heart, and then gaze over the right shoulder. Looking through the corner of the eyes. So adding in this eye yoga is an important piece because the eyes are a muscle too. If you don't believe me, believe Paul McCartney. I <laughs> found a YouTube video of him teaching eye yoga. So you can check it out. Exhale, unwind. All right, we're going to release that left leg. We're going to lift the right knee. We're going to cross that foot over and then hook the left arm around it. Pull up through the navel, through the sternum. Wind to your right. Push the right hand down into your sticky mat and see if you can drive your right shoulder back and your left shoulder forward to rotate a bit more through the thoracic area. That is a portion of the back that should have more mobility. If you didn't max it out in the first round. Try not to go beyond your max though, because you want to still channel your breath. Good, exhale and wind. All right, crisscross your ankles. Roll forward to your palm, step back plank, and take an extra relaxation. And then you can sit to your knees, come back down to your seat, legs out in front. All right, that's equal to the other side, arms lift. Exhale, fold. Maybe that same hand position we tried earlier.
Inhale, hand slide back behind us. This time we're gonna bend the knees to reverse table. Tuck the tailbone, lift the pelvis. You're hanging the head back, not jackknifing it back, just enough so the neck still in line with the spine. Breathe into the front of the shoulders. And then exhale, lower your seat. All right, the left knee's already bent, so we can just slide the right leg out. Left arm's gonna move to the inside, and then we start to bind the arms. Reaching out towards the foot. Developing that smooth rhythmic breath. Inhale, start to come up. Slide your left foot over. Reach the arms overhead. Create that little umbrella and then see if your hands can wrap to the opposite side of the foot. It's okay if you can't quite reach. Rotate the abdomen towards your thigh. Come up. Slide your right foot in, point the left toes. Right arm to the inside, same type of binding, except the head lowers and falls heavily. Gazing beyond the tip of the nose. Inhaling, slowly lifting. Let your head come up last. And then look over the left shoulder. Release the bind. Slide your right <coughs> foot out. Lift your left knee up. Cross that foot over. Hug it in. Left hand is going to kind of prop you up. So as you push through the fingertips, you can extend the spine longer, but you can also push into that hand to roll through the shoulders more. Now looking through the left corner of the eye. Affirming, I radiate my love, goodwill, compassion to soul friends everywhere. And exhale, unwind. <laughs> Crisscross, roll forward, step back, down dog. From downward facing dog, I want you to look forward towards your hands. I want you to bend your knees, pop the feet wide apart just behind them. Slide your hands back, plant them down, lower your seat, lift your head up, heel, toe, the feet more together for Bhujapindasana, the arm balance. If this is challenging, you can do crow in replacement of this, or you can do squat. If you want to go to Tita Vasana, that's where you straighten out the legs. You'll tip forward to land your feet, and then you'll bend the arms to drop your seat. It's not always a soft landing, but it gets you back down to the floor. All right, we'll slip the hands under the knees. We'll lift the toes, let the legs slide out and bow. For Mustana Portis. Now 
rounding the back, bowing the head. It's very internal. Position that allows us to be more introspective. And then slide the hands in. Now. Okay. So I'm going to look around the back of your mat. Make sure it's clear. So we're going to lace the first two fingers down. Your toes. Separate your legs. It's okay if the knees have to bend as long as your back is straight. So it's better to be here versus here, the background. All right, we're going to try to roll back. The feet may or may not touch the floor. Draw the feet more together and then bring the arms around so that your hands are supporting your back. We've gone from a wide plow with that uh, openness between the legs into closed legs. All right, from plow, velocina, we're gonna pipe the legs up together towards shoulder stand, the queen of asana. Toes pointed upward, thighs rolling inward. And then bring the knees down to the third eye, Ardha Kandasana. Straighten the leg back over the face. Inhale, lift just the right leg up. So the left leg is overhead and the right leg's pointing towards the ceiling. And then swap the two. Right leg down, left leg up. Breathe. Bring both legs up. Contract your core. Lower down one vertebra at a time. Straighten out your legs. Roll the hands under the thighs. So we need a counter position for the neck because that was a lot of traction in the neck. And we were getting um, a lot of compression there. So push up with the elbows, lift your head and chest, continue to puff up to your chest, but allow the head to casually lower. Throat wide open, barely a little weight on the head. Fish pose. Take five to seven breaths. And then lift the head up, roll down. Release your hands next. And then curl the knees in. A little counter. And then let's roll to one side. So, Queen of Asanas, the shoulder stand. Now I know these poses stem from India and there's lots of stories about kings and queens in India, but all I could think about today was, yep, there were a lot of queens that were beheaded back in the day. In <laughs> and a lot of times people will tell me that's the way they feel in the pose and that's why they don't like doing the pose. It's because they feel like they're head. Oh, it's a horrible thing to think about, right? <laughs> but if you believe in past lives, there's a possibility that it might have happened. And that's why that fear is still imprinted into your soul. Think about it. So if you really have to avoid that pose, it's okay, avoid it. Um, 
king of asanas. Okay. So you can spin your mat around to use a wall for support. We can use these apparatuses that require no pressure on the head or the neck, which is fantastic. Um, and then we have the Shrishasana one that we usually do at the end of this practice. So that would be measuring, wrapping your hands around your elbows and then together. Placing the head down. And then if you're at the wall, your head, hands would be right at the wall. You press down through the forearms and walk the feet in. You can curl up, lift one leg or pike up like we did from plow to shoulder tip. I would suggest taking up maybe 10 breaths and then come to child pose. Then do you want to help you? Yes. Hold the hand apart. Then the knees. And then push your shoulder all the way back to the support. Yep. And then if you push down for your hands, your core will engage automatically. And then you can pick the curl up. Nice. Push your forearms a little. Yes, good. I don't know if you noticed, but you're kind of like, so that just gave you a boost. If you're ever fearful about going up, I usually suggest. You know, just doing little push ups here, a little calf stretch. And that just helps to engage and strengthen the muscles that will be used even with your head down. Another way is to come to dolphin, traveling the feet closer and just being inverted this way without even lifting. So that's a great alternative. Yeah, I'm back in Dolphin or my head's dolphin. So I'm just putting up my shoulder. We're just doing one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, don't 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 you don't have to come up from dolphin. But just come back to it a moment. Okay, so I saw you were lifting like one leg up. And uh -huh. Please don't go up with your shoulder. But I want you to realize why it might not have felt good or correct is your hips are not quite aligned over your shoulders. So with your legs straight, right? So bend your knees, travel the feet in closer to the face. Feel how the hips are coming closer. more forward. Yeah. And then. That makes it easier. Yeah. You don't have to go all the way up to that. But does it feel different now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep trying. Yeah. So, what I was sharing with Mary Beth, for those of you tuning in, um, her legs were straight, but her hips weren't quite over her shoulders. So, if you bend the knees to get the hips over the shoulders, it'll be easier to lift and find that balance. Okay. All right, Shavasana. So you can do legs up the wall if you want, or you can lay out the corpse position the regular way, which is down on your back, feet fanned open, hands in the A frame positioning. So Shavasana began as a meditation. 
death. Well, some teachers will say this is the death of the physical posing. Now you get to be still. But the true meditation is in the discovery, in your own inner experience of learning and knowing and understanding you are so much more than this body, and even the intellect of your mind. That the mind and the body is actually a byproduct of the soul, the inner witness. And the soul is not just the inner witness, it is the whole energetic field. You may have heard of orbs. When people take photographs, you might see a little orb of light above or around some. And often they say that orb of light is a spirit. But imagine it being much larger than the orb you would see in a photograph. It not only dwells in your heart, it's more expansive, it's invisible, and it surrounds your whole body. And it's okay if you don't believe that, just dive inside, connect to the inner witness, to the observer of it all, and see if you can rec recognize its infinite nature.
Next, stretch your arms over ahead, hold the feet together. As you exhale, draw in. If you're flat on your back, you can rock side to side. Rolling to one and then coming up for a formal seat. Drawing your hands together. Light within me, honors and bows to the beautiful light to me. This day. Beautiful rest of your week. And uh, there are 